Fulham nil, Chelsea two, match review, let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another match review. Like I said, this is Fulham nil, Chelsea to Chelsea get another win on their books. Two wins in a row now for the Blues and they have officially doubled their goals scored for the month of September with two goals scored versus Fulham in their first game of October. So obviously I'm over the moon. I'm super excited about it. There's a lot to get into, a lot to unpack. So let's get right into to it. Ah, oh, another Chelsea win. I'm honestly, it's just like crazy the difference in my moods that that it makes when I have a Chelsea win. So I'm going to first share the team news that we saw. So we had a couple of well, more than a couple. We had loads of players out injured. So through injury, the usual list, Badiashio, Beninelli, uh, Chalaba, Fafana, Rhys James, Lavia, and Kuku Benchuil. And then the big two were that we have Nicholas Jackson, who was suspended because of accumulation of yellow cards. And then Malo Gusto is serving a three-match uh, game suspension for his red card. So like in the Carabao Cup, we saw Marco Correa come in at that right back spot. And then we had a center back pairing of the Sassi and Thiago Silva with Cowell filling in. And that left back spot, it seems Ben Chirwell is going to be out for a couple of weeks, about a month, something along those lines. Midfield is what you would expect. Enzo Fernandez, Moises Caicedo, and Conor Gallagher. But the change that we saw in this midfield was that Conor Gallagher was operating a little bit more forward, which was amazing to see because I do feel that that is his best position and where we really see him shine. He was also captaining the Chelsea side today. So we saw more of a midfield pairing of Caicedo and Enzo. Conor Gallagher was operating more in that uh, 10 space. And then a front three of Cole Palmer, Armando Borja, and Mikhailo Mudrik. So Raheem Sterling was on the bench. It seemed that he had a bit of a flu or a cold, so he hadn't been training for the previous three days, so he started off of the bench. We got to see Cole Palmer starting in his place. So overall, I liked this starting 11. I was a little bit nervous to maybe see how we would play because I feel like in the past when we've had that back three of Desassi, Tiago Silva, and Will. Sometimes it's been a transition for them to kind of learn. It seems that Tiago Silva is getting a bit slower this season and where he doesn't have that recovery pace and it feels like we're trying to cover for him a little bit. And then when you have Modric starting there instead of um, Ben Chewell, he's less defensively inclined. But Overall, I felt that Chelsea had an absolutely stunning game. I was honestly so happy about it. I know that it's Fulham, um, but honestly, this is this is like a crazy stat. Actually, this is the first time that Chelsea beat a team that was above them on the day that they played since May 2021. It's been oh my god, I was gonna say a year and a half. No, it's been like two years which is insane um obviously you have like summer in the middle of that but that just like shows how poor Chelsea were um last season and they it's true like we could not beat a team that was above us so that moves Chelsea into 11th place till at the bottom of the table or in the second half of the table, but we're seeing signs of improvement. So one of the people that I want to talk about is Mikhailo Mudrik. I thought that he was just phenomenal uh, in this game. And it comes as no surprise to me that he we're starting to see the best of him now that he has four consecutive starts under his belt as well. So he had played just 45 minutes. Potch spoke after the game and said that 
he felt something in his thigh. Hopefully it's more precautionary than anything else. So that's why he took him off. But I thought that he was causing trouble that entire half that he played. And that we're finally starting to see more of a link up between the attack as well, which is something that I've wanted to see. He looks like he's really putting in the work and the effort. And his goal was just absolutely phenomenal. It was a pass by Caicedo and then Colwell just threaded the ball beautifully. Modric chests it down and at this point when he's lower on confidence maybe he would have skyped the ball over the bar but no he slotted it through the keeper's legs and I was just so freaking pleased for him you could tell how much it meant to him as well and I'm going to see if I can pull up this photo that I tweeted because it's just phenomenal and it's um the reaction of um Enzo and Caicedo. Let me share my screen here. It's the reaction of Enzo and Caicedo to um, to Modric Skull. And you can see, look at their faces. Like it's a bit blurry, but it just is so freaking sweet. Like I absolutely adore that. Uh, and you can see how much he really needed that and how much it meant. And Cowell was just like, yes, you freaking deserve it. So I just love that. It's amazing to see. Um, and I thought that he put in a fantastic performance. So happy to see him getting his confidence back. Um, and when Poch was asked about Modric after the game, he said, it's about maturity adaptation. We have to understand that young people need time. It's been a massive change for him. Um, and that basically he's been putting in the work behind the scenes and really trying hard. Again, this is a young team. I've been shouting it for the past couple of months, if not more, that Chelsea have one of the youngest teams, if not the youngest team in the league. I think um, their bench, apart from one player, the average age of their bench was just 20 years old. So it's going to take time for this team to gel, but we're seeing such like good good signs and hopefully the Brighton game was what we needed to just get everything clicking and somebody else that I wanted to talk about is this guy Connor Gallagher he captained Chelsea yesterday he was officially awarded the man of the match perf uh, for his performance and I just thought that he looked so strong he was everywhere on the pitch I really do think that he looks a lot better when he's playing further up the pitch he was getting into the pockets of this of space he was he had some really good turns just like turning away from the opponent I was really impressed with him um, and after the game, Connor Gallagher said it was a decent performance, not as good as we would have liked, but we desperately needed the three points. Wins brings confidence, so hopefully we can build on this. Uh, the boss said before the game he wanted the midfield to rotate more, get higher, be more free on the ball. I got in good pockets, and I think it worked more. Really proud. It's a really proud moment to captain the club. It's my club. I've supported Chelsea my whole life. I want to keep performing. And um, Dave Jones joked that Connor seemed more serious since getting our man. And he said, you've got to be, don't you? It's a young squad. And I've tried to be a leader and more disciplined on and off the pitch. And this is somebody that Chelsea were close to selling come the summer. And now he's just gone and turned it around, put in a man of the match performance and is captaining his childhood club. He, his whole family are Chelsea fans. Like you can tell how much it means to him, how much it means for him to play to be captaining and he's somebody that's putting in effort week in week out and i saw this interview that frank lampard was talking about him and they were asking you know why does every manager pick conor gallagher and he said well like there's a lot of things that us fans don't see uh, in the games because behind the scenes this kid is putting in 120 percent every training session he wants to be there he's fighting hard and that those are the those are the players that you want fighting for the match those are the players that you want playing uh, so I was super pleased uh, with his performance as well um, just taking a look at some of the other players that I thought had really good um performances i thought that cole palmer had another good performance he's looking like a really good signing for chelsea as well um he had one shot on target one shot off target uh 81 accurate passes won three out of ten ground duels uh but i just feel that going forward he he really oops 
going forward, he really contributed a lot. He's very, he's very, what's the word that I'm looking for? He's very creative, I think, in his movement. And if you just take a look at um, his, his map here, here you go. If you just take a look at his map here, you can really see that he is operating. He was operating largely on the right hand side, but also in the middle as well. So I felt that he was getting into really good areas and we were just seeing the attack look more fluid and the players contributing off of one another. I do feel that the first half we played better than we did in the second half. We were forced into some substitutions uh, in the second half with obviously Mudra coming off um and i'm just going to pull the game up here to give a run by so modric came off at halftime again like i mentioned i do think that it was precautionary um for him and then um Ian Matson came on. Ian Matson hit the post. He was so close to scoring as well. And then Enzo almost rebounded it. But uh, Leno came out and made a good save in the end. Um, and then Broya, also one of the standout players for me, scored a goal. It was taking advantage of a mistake by uh, Tim Ream. And he kind of just like forced the interception and the ball went in. Fulham looked totally stunned. I think one that they conceded from Madrid's goal, but then for Chelsea to score a minute and a half later, I was like, what is, what is going on with my team? We're scoring goals. We scored two goals in like a minute. What is happening? This is amazing. I thought that he looked phenomenal as well. He didn't look like a player that had been sitting on the sidelines for the past year because of the extent of the injury that he had. So I was super pleased to see him. And again, he got taken off taken off early around the 60th minute. I was gutted to see him taken off. Um, but Pot did speak after the game and he's hopeful that both Mudrik and Broya will make it for Saturday's fixture. Uh, he said that he's really pleased for both of them, uh, for Misha because he scored his first goal in the Premier League and for Armando after a long period out. Um, so I don't know, let's see what this what happens is obviously something that we need to monitor. Just really shit luck that Chelsea have the two goal scorers go off injured. I don't know what's happening. Like that's just too odd uh, that Chelsea have so many injuries. We need to sort that. Like, I don't know what's going on, um, but I thought that he looked phenomenal as well. And um, with that type of performance, I feel like he should start ahead of uh, Nico. And then the last player that I wanted to talk about today was Levi Kowa. I thought that he looked phenomenal as well. His passing range really, I don't want to say it goes like under the radar because I don't think it actually goes under the radar, but it's so underrated because when you think of a center back, that's not necessarily one of the first characteristics or things that you're thinking about in a player, but his passing range is just phenomenal. The way that he reads the game, he looks much more senior than he actually is. And he looks like he's been playing in this Chelsea side for years. So he looks really refined. Obviously he's still a young player, but he's one of the first names on the team sheet for me. Really good that Chelsea have I've gotten him back that they held on to him because he's a very 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 special talent as well so i'm excited to see where he goes from here so overall was it the best chelsea game ever no but I, I did think like i said that chelsea played better in the first half than they did in the second half obviously they were forced into some substitutions that kind of rattled a bit the momentum and the chemistry of the game as well um but Chelsea have two wins in a row, two, they're scoring, kept two clean sheets as well. So on the right path, which is always positive. Uh, now Chelsea have a string of pretty difficult fixtures coming up, Burnley away and on paper, that looks like a game that Chelsea should 100% be winning. But Chelsea historically struggle with low block sides, especially Burnley. They always struggle against Burnley for some reason. Then we have a run of truly truly difficult games playing Arsenal at home, Brentford at home. Then we have the Carabao Cup in between, Spurs away, uh, City at home, Newcastle away, Brighton at home, United away. So 
that that's going to take us up until December 6th. Chelsea have some really, really crazy fixtures coming up, crazy difficult fixtures. But if we can start getting wins in some of those games, that's going to be absolutely massive for us and absolutely massive for the team's confidence. Like when the team is playing poorly and especially how Chelsea have been playing that they haven't even necessarily been playing so poorly. They've been creating a lot. They just haven't been putting the ball in the back of the net and then they're conceding from individual errors. But the underlying stats are very promising. So when you have that and then you start building confidence on top of it Chelsea could potentially go on to a good run of form so hopefully we can just keep building this momentum building this confidence as well and get get back to our winning ways so that's my match review apologies that I didn't do it after the game yesterday um it was just way too late for me, so I had to do it the following day. But I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you enjoyed the game. I know that I did. And yeah, tons of content coming up over the next couple of days. I'll be going to the Atletico Madrid uh, game tomorrow in the Champions League. So that's going to be super fun. And yeah, any other content that you guys want to see, you know, just comment and I'll try to make it happen. So hope that you guys have a great rest of your day, evening, whatever time you're watching this. And until next time, I'm out. Bye.